Hi there, fifth wheel owners. Today in your 2017 Keystone Montana, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install Hydrostar's Tandem Axle Brake Line Kit. To assist us in getting a full disc brake kit set up on this, we're also going to be using Kodiak's disc brake kit and Hydrostar's 1600 PSI hydraulic brake actuator. We'll begin our line installation by getting our lines run from our actuator to the back. You'll receive multiple lines in this kit and this is gonna be the longest one. So you're gonna to wanna to get it uncoiled and it's going to attach to your actuator here. I'll show you how I got it inside just one second, but I want to show you where we're, our end goal is and also how to tighten it down. I highly recommend that you use a line wrench when tightening these down, and all the ends on our lines are gonna use a 3 8 inch size. A line wrench like this is gonna have increased surface area so you don't strip it out. You can get it tighter and not have to worry about causing any damage to it. Whenever you're tightening it down, you do wanna make sure you're holding the other side. So we're just gonna hold it with our wrench and just snug her on down. Once you get it nice and snug, you're good to go. We'll check for leaks at the end and, and snug them down more if we need to. But in most cases, if you've got a line wrench, you can get it nice and tight with no issues. Our line goes down and then it goes out a hole that we had drilled right down there at the bottom. And then we are gonna head outside and start riding it towards the back. For reference, we are starting in our front compartment because that's where we mounted our actuator. This is where we pass through the hole that we had drilled and we come down you will notice there's a little piece of rubber here. This is just some rubber vacuum line that I had laying around. We do sell vacuum line here at eTrailer.com if you wanna pick some up. It's great for wrapping around brake lines where there's any place where you're suspecting it might rub against metal and potentially cause an issue. So we just slit it to open it up and just wrap it around there. I use a little zip tie just to keep it wrapped around in place. From here, we just go around our propane line and we're just gonna follow that propane line all the way back because it's already routed in a way where we know it's going to be avoiding any moving components or anything like that. So we just stay right underneath of it using the included clamps and self-tapping screws to just run it right into the frame there. And we just continue following it along next to our propane line, just in front of our axle. I did pull this panel down right here so we could hide the excess line that we have. Because this line is very long and we don't need it to go beyond the axle, we want to stop right about the axle. So we just take it and coil it up right here. Now in order to prevent any noise and to keep anything from rattling and touching one another, I did wrap vacuum line around these coils as well and secured it with a clamp and some zip ties. The zip ties are only around the hose so that way there's no contact on to our brake line other than the hoses that we've got wrapped around it there. Once we get it coiled up though, then we just continue on and it just goes right here to above our axle. At this point, we can now start using the rest of our lines and unions to getting everything hooked up to our brakes. Now, the routing path that we just took is for our trailer's layout. You do wanna keep in mind that depending on the floor plan and options you've chosen on your trailer, that the layout underneath could have various other components, slide outs, there's a lot of different things that can change. So your path might be slightly different coming back here. But once you get back here, we're gonna use the same unions to get to the correct locations. So we're gonna start with our four way split here. So we've got our main line going in. On the opposite side, we have a flex hose that goes, that goes down and will connect to our caliper. And we chose this one because we wanted the hose to be angled this direction because we're trying to keep the flex hose on the back side, on the inside of our leaf spring stack. When tightening down the flex hoses, they're gonna use the same 3 8 line wrench. So now you have three more lines that come in your kit. You'll have one that is slightly longer than the other two. The two that are the shortest are going to be the ones that go from one axle back to the other axle. So that's what we have here. This is one of the shortest lines. It just comes out the side and we route it back, just following this propane line once again. We did have to make a small loop right here just to get rid of some of the excess. And then it just uses the single union to connect to a brake hose to go there. When holding your unions, your T's, or anything like that, you'll use a half inch wrench to slide over the flat spots here so you can hold those when tightening them down. The line that's longer than the two short ones you get, the medium sized line, this is gonna go across from one side to the other. And I just made a little slit in the panel here and just ran it over and then made a little slit on the other side where the line pops out. And over there, we're gonna connect to a three way. We again come off the back with our flex hose that's gonna go to the caliper, just like we did on the other side. And also, just like we did on the other side, when we come out the outside here, we're gonna bend this back, go on the inside of our equalizer, continue on back, we make a loop once again to get rid of the excess, 
connect to a union, and then it's just like the other side as well in the rear axle. Now in addition to your line kit, you are gonna need a disc brake system that you're gonna be hooking to. We've got calipers and disc brake kits available here at eTrailer.com. Now that we've got everything hooked up, we'll go ahead and fill our system with fluid and then bleed all the air out. We're gonna start at the caliper that is the furthest away from where our actuator is. So we put the actuator at the front on the driver's side. We're here at the rear on the passenger side. And you wanna use the top bleeder screw. Some of your kits that you get do have bottom bleeder screws. That's just because you can change the orientation depending upon the application for this caliper. Always use the top. To help minimize mess, we're just going to use a hose to direct the fluid down into a container. And then we'll need an assistant to either pull the breakaway switch pin or activate the brake controller to start pumping it. You'll want to make sure you've got the actuator filled with fluid and you can use DOT3 or DOT4 brake, brake fluid. We're using DOT3. All right, Shane. And we want to do this until we get a nice solid stream, just like we have there. There's no air bubbles in it, so we're going to close it off. You can turn it off. And we're gonna just repeat this process at each wheel until we get a nice solid stream out of each one so we don't have any air in the system. After each time that you bleed some of the fluid through the system, you wanna have your assistant just double check the reservoir to make sure that it's full because if you run it empty while bleeding, you have to start the process all over again. Now that we've got all the fluid bled out, we wanna make sure that we don't have any leaks. To do this, we're just gonna pull the breakaway switch pin. It's gonna deadhead our pump, put it at the maximum pressure, and we're gonna check each of the unions and fittings to make sure that there's nothing leaking there. We'll start with our first connection here, nice and dry. So we're just gonna move back and then check each individual one. Especially make sure to check the unions, that's usually the spot you're gonna find leaks the most. But we're all dry, so we're all good to go. We can now reinstall our tires and start enjoying our new brake system. And that completes our installation of Hydrostar's tandem axle brake line kit on our 2017 Keystone Montana.